Hi everyone and welcome to the webinar, Serving Extraordinary Hospitality. I'm Javiana Schmid, your Open Table Venga representative. We are excited to have Steve Motion, Director of Sales and Marketing at Venga with us today. He's going to be discussing three ways you can craft a personalized experience for your guests at scale without having to spend hours behind a computer. Steve comes to us with 12 years of experience in the restaurant industry, helping full-service restaurants grow revenue through personalized service, reputation management, and effective marketing. Before we get started, just a few housekeeping notes. First, this webinar will be recorded and emailed to everyone, so keep an eye out for it in your inbox. And second, please submit any questions you have throughout the webinar in the Q&A chat box, and I will be taking questions at the end. Now let's begin. Over to you, Steve. Thank you, Joviana, and hello everyone on this webinar. My name is Steve Motion, and I've been lucky enough to work across the restaurant tech landscape for the past 10 years. In fact, this February, I celebrated 10 years working in restaurant technology. But before making the jump into tech, I worked in hotel and restaurant operations. And again, I've been fortunate enough to work with some of the major players in the hospitality sector over the years. My restaurant um, fun experience, funnily enough, started out back of house in the kitchen for Jamie Oliver's family pub uh, in Essex way back in the early 90s. And I went on to spend four years in hotels with Radisson and Ritz Carlton in the US, and then another six years in casual dining and fast casual brands. Uh, Pret-a-Manger and TGI Fridays in the UK. Today I'm going to walk you through three ways that you can create exceptional experiences for your diners by drawing on from my operational experience um, and how you can bring that into the restaurant and also looking at my professional experience in the tech sector uh, and giving some advice and tips on how you can do that. So those three things we're going to look at are personalizing experiences in the restaurant, targeted and most importantly relevant marketing to those guests that have been in, in the dining room and also how to turn feedback into action. All of these hopefully without you having to spend too much time behind your computer and more time front of house with your guests delivering those amazing wow moments. So the first thing we're going to look at is delivering extraordinary hospitality. What does that mean? Well, we now live in an experience economy. We know that the consumers of today are looking for more than just products and services. They actually want to garner an experience whenever they interact with businesses and spend their hard-earned cash. What we don't talk enough about in restaurants is how do we get there? How do we take the restaurant experience and turn it into um, a real dining experience that guests can go away and, and share with others? The reality is here, it's, it's about personalization. Um, we as consumers, we want to have the most personalized experiences wherever we go. And understanding that no two guests are the same. My needs are different to the table who are sat next to me's needs. Um, but fortunately, this doesn't have to be super difficult for the restaurant to implement. Um, our restaurant systems across the business, they are getting way smarter and we have access to many more data points than we used to. And what we need to do is just make those data points actionable and put them in the hands of the team members who are interacting with our customers. Obviously, by doing this, this is going to help you scale personalization. So the key is to build processes that you can scale, not just to recognize those one or two guests that you see coming in on your busy shifts, you know, your Friday or Saturday night, but actually replicate that to the majority of your guests that come into your business, whether that's their first or maybe their second visit, but allow your team to be able to deliver those wow moments. We also want to come up with ways of automating some of the tasks and the intel that you gather um, from your guests by coming up with processes that can um, be centrally um, centrally kept and then allow you to bring that information together in one place, surfacing it in the way of um, pre-shift reports or surfacing it in the reservation system. 
So today I'm going to share some of my tried and true methods for creating these more personalized experiences throughout your guest's entire journey. We'll also explore what extraordinary hospitality looks like in practice, using some examples from restaurants that we currently work with who've mastered this um, idea and look to some industry leaders for advice and tips. There are many of us on this webinar who are members of loyalty programs. Um, our wallets are literally full. I mean, I know mine is with Tesco club card, Nectar, Avios, or my morning coffee shop stamp card that I've got. Um, but how many of us are so blown away by these loyalty schemes that we are members of that we then go on to tell our friends and family about? Well, I conducted a poll of restaurant operators on another web webinar that I delivered um, a while back. And 65% of the attendees said the loyalty cards that they were a part of weren't really worth raving about or telling other people about. And I have to say, as a bit of a smartphone geek, I get excited when brands I love launch a new loyalty, uh, digital loyalty program. But I rarely go on to tell people how great those, those apps are or how great those program benefits are quite frankly, because most of them are just okay. Um, I do have to admit, though, I do use the Starbucks one, and that is super useful. Um, and I know that they send me push notifications that drive, uh, drive me to go into their stores and, and buy more of their coffees. As consumers, though, we no longer just want the points, the most points. That's, that's a nice to have. Um, but we actually want recognition something that lights that dopamine into our brains that gives us that real kick and feels, feels good. And I've got a recent example of this, actually. I was traveling on um, a transatlantic flight. Actually, I was with Virgin Atlantic, and um, I was traveling between London and the U.S. And I used to travel quite frequently between um, the UK and the US. So I had status on Virgin Atlantic, um, had their membership program. And even though I was flying economy, I was greeted by name as I got on board and the cabin crew mentioned my loyalty status being gold. And I think they must be using a CRM tool to obviously have this information uh, to hand. But I felt that the technology didn't get in the way of the interaction that I had with the flight attendant, the cabin crew that was serving, serving me. Um, they offered to relocate me and upgrade my seat because I was in right at the back, in, probably in a middle seat. Um, and they said, oh, you know, we've got a, another seat available. I think it was in premium economy. Um, and they said to me, the, the flight attendant, we got a note that you really like to have a lot of water what, during a flight. Let me get you a, a big bottle of water to keep with you. And I'm going to go and grab you a pillow from first class. So if you wanted to um, put the armrests up of these two seats and lie down, uh, then you're going to have a nice pillow to be comfortable. And I actually felt really appreciated as a customer. I was told, admittedly, that I was the only gold card um, status holder on the flight. But I feel that the service that I received was genuine. And I think that that's the most important thing. And this got me thinking about ways that personalization is used across industries. Um, and obviously, we're in the business of restaurants and looking at how this turns a happy customer into a real brand advocate. So talking of brand advocacy, did you know that 75% of diners said they would be more likely to attend restaurants that recognize them by name or recommend options based on their past preferences and purchases. And when I think about that, and I relate it to my experiences, I do like to go out, I do like to um, meet up with my friends in restaurants, and I tend to be the person that, that books the table. And it really rings true for me that, you know, I like to go back to the places that recognize me and make me feel special. And personalizing the guest experience organically, it just increases diner loyalty. And I mentioned Starbucks on the previous slide. You know, they know what I like because I use the app to pay and they know what my favorite coffee is. Um, 
to the clear frappuccinos in the afternoon, midweek. Uh, they send me a push notification, and uh, when I haven't been there for a while, I'll be reminded, and sometimes it's with a discount, and I'll go in and I'll buy my frappuccino. Um, not normally in the winter, it's a bit too cold. I might switch it up a bit, but um, they know me, and they personalize their marketing to me based on what they know about me. And if you think about Starbucks versus a restaurant's opportunity to wow a guest in the dining room with personalization, at Starbucks, you know, if I order on the app, I've probably got all of about 45 seconds of interaction with one of their team members uh, when I'm collecting my coffee from the collect end of the counter. In a restaurant, you know, depending on the size of the table and, and, and your concept or how busy you are, you've got up to two hours to be able to deliver those real wow personalization moments. And I understand that busy restaurants, there's other things that get prioritized. Uh, we of course need to focus on, on the basics in the restaurant, but what's gonna keep our customers coming back is this idea of personalization and recognition. Loyal guests are really valuable. Making them feel appreciated is the key. So what we need to do is foster our brand advocates. We want those diners, the ones that love us, the ones that go out and tell their friends, their family, their colleagues um, how great they are. We want them to come into the restaurant and we want them to go back telling people how great the restaurant is long after they've received their dessert. So we're going to look a little bit more about how we can do that. So how can we actually put that into practice? Personalization can be fairly difficult to comprehend at scale, but there are tools built to support making it work for your restaurant. So here's what you're going to need. You need to know each and every guest by gathering as much intel, little bits of notes, guest codes, uh, gathering them as much as you can. So you can do this manually uh, as it stands today. Uh, you can set up a process internally for your waiters to uh, maybe print out an extra check when they close off a table of four and they've spent over 600 pounds. Um, and I actually used to do this process when I used to work in restaurants many years ago. Uh, the process that we implemented was you would spike that um, bill and it was up to the person on the reception desk to then update the reservation system with those um, tags and those notes. Uh, for example, you know, logging into open table and tagging someone as a, a big spender or a wine lover um, and maybe making some notes about those guest preferences. Um, you can keep tabs on your guests' likes and their dislikes and other preferences that you would typically discuss in your pre-shift meetings. So you can keep track um, of the guest experience during service and use those profiles in OpenTable to build the rich data. So if you are using a manual system, make sure that you've communicated to the team uh, exactly what type of uh, intel that you want to gather and, and let the team know the reason that you are doing that. Um, when I used to work at Ritz-Carlton many years ago, we were actually incentivized to capture guest preferences whenever we heard them. And this might be something that you would consider in your restaurant to be able to incentivize the team to um, gather those pieces of intel. Obviously, building a culture within the team uh, to grow the number of in intel points on your guests is, is really powerful because you know that those repeat customers are the ones that are going to be able to become your advocates and spend more money. With Venga and Guest Center, uh, we can enhance this by automating some of these processes. So yeah, you can do it manually, but uh, we can automate this using the Venga and Guest Center partnership. And we overlay social media information on the guests, um, like how many Twitter followers they have, their LinkedIn photo, uh, what star rating they left you for a review last time they dined. So we can enhance the, the typical things that you would pick up from your diner meal experiences with some overlaid uh, intel that can be automatically gathered. What we don't want to do is use the data and come across as disingenuous and possibly a bit creepy. Uh, an example, sort of, hi, Mr. Smith, I see you had the Long Island iced tea last time. Do you want that again? 
doesn't sound very genuine and would be pretty scary as the customer to see, oh, you're keeping tabs on what I'm ordering. But we want to empower our front of house teams to use the knowledge and we provide them uh, to deliver these guest wows. So as an example, to try and do this a little bit more authentically, uh, welcome back, Mr. Smith. We recently updated our cocktail list and I can really recommend the Tokyo tea. Um, it's very similar to a Long Island iced tea. And it's one of my favorites. We tried it yesterday when we were doing some testing. Uh, would you like me to put one of those through for you to try? Um, and it's about delivering the message wrapped up in hospitality. So you know that he likes Long Island iced teas. You're making a recommendation that's relevant to what he's ordered before. And you're elevating that service by potentially offering him to try one. What you need to do is put in as much information into these profiles as you can. And I understand that it can get busy. You know, uh, Saturday night, you've got a line of people um, out the door. But as I said before, building the culture of personalization in the team is the way to ensure that this happens. And, you know, I remember my days as a waiter and I was earning more tips um, from the regulars. And that was a good motivator for me because I knew if I treated them in a certain way, that they would look after me. So one of the things that some of our restaurant partners do is they match the waiters who are from um, different parts of the country to serve guests that they know maybe went to university there or by looking at their LinkedIn profile, being able to see, oh, this customer's corporate office is based in uh, Leicester, we've got Paul working tonight on the floor. He's from Leicester. I'm going to match those two together and he can work that section because I know sure enough they're going to strike up a conversation and that's going to build a, a little connection between the restaurant and that customer. Another thing you can do is seat guests with a large number of social media followers on tables that are really well lit, for example, because you know that those food images that they're going to be taking and you know hovering their phone, their smartphones above the table they're going to be pushed out there as images promoting your restaurant for free. So do what you can to make sure that those images look as, as great as possible. Tell the kitchen that table six that just sat down um, had a huge social media following. Uh, maybe the chef will send out a, a complimentary um, appetizer or a little something as a, a taster for that customer to really give them that wow moment from the beginning. You can take the preferences and you can customize the experience. So a classic example, super easy to do if a customer really likes a booth table or a quiet table or a table near a plug point because they've got a laptop and they need to carry on with their, their work whilst they're sitting down and dining with you. These are really simple things that you can do. And if you are making notes of that in the system next time that they dine, uh, you know that you can deliver those um, unexpected customized experiences. Ultimately, we want to allow the guests to go online and leave you a five-star review uh, saying how amazing the service was and how the, the, the team member that was looking after them really was genuine and made them feel special. Uh, their dopamine was you know, ramped up. And ultimately, that online review will allow you to drive new guests in the door based on your brand advocates who are posting online. Let's look at real, a real life example of a restaurant group that is, is doing this and some of the outputs that they've seen by implementing processes like this. So the example I wanted to share with you um, actually comes from one of our clients. They're a multi-site operator called uh, the Boca Group, and they've got restaurants that consistently appear in the Michelin Guide. They're winning stars year after year, and they take personalization really seriously. So what they do is they focus on the pre-shift report that they get pushed out of Venga and OpenTable. And they use that intel to personalize um, the guest experience. And they make recommendations on wine, on certain dishes. Um, they reference um, popular items, upsells, and they have these great conversations with their diners. And the operations manager has said that he's literally changed the way his staff operate. Uh, he gives them much more information to work on and provides them the guest with a personalized experience at scale because this data is in the hands of his, his team. So 
So gone are the days of having a maitre d' on staff who works every shift and is able to memorize all the guests. Um, restaurants now have got an opportunity to introduce technology to offer a consistently personalized experience every time, regardless of who is on shift. And um, this makes me think of when I was working in a restaurant in London, I actually witnessed this firsthand. Uh, the maitre d' went off to St. Anton skiing one season and unfortunately got injured. Uh, I think he broke his ankle, poor chap. Um, and he was out for about four weeks. And we struggled as a team to deliver those customized wow moments because he was the one that knew about all the guests and all their preferences and he had all that knowledge in his head. So my top tip here is decide on what intel is most important to your restaurant type. Four or five key data points, no more than that because it gets a bit undigestible. And build a manual or an automated process to support capturing that data and your team will embrace it because they'll start to see the benefit themselves, whether that's more tips or seeing repeat guests coming in, seeing those um, five-star reviews being put on websites, uh, the, the review websites that guests go on, and hopefully seeing their names mentioned in there with all of that great uh, pieces of feedback. So we've looked at personalization in the restaurant. The next way we can create an exceptional experience for your diners is to actually go outside of the full restaurant walls and offer relevant targeted marketing to those guests. Now, many restaurants, and you listening might be one of them, um, use blanket email marketing and being able to have an email database and send out one message to, to everyone uh, Quite frankly, this idea of blanket marketing doesn't work in the year 2020. I have personally 3,000 unread messages in my inbox. It's true. My notifications on my email app are insane. Um, some people are looking at it and think, oh, how do you manage with that? But I've got an email account which I use specifically for um, going, signing up to marketing and, and, and so on. But my inbox is full. and yeah, I'm going to get confirmations of my Amazon orders and my reminders for the dentist. I'm going to skim through and find the things that are important to me. But I only open messages that have relevant subject lines. Restaurants get my attention when they know what dishes I enjoy, how often I dine, what locations I prefer. And as I said before, I'm the one in my group, mainly because I work here at Open Table that's responsible for making all of the dinner reservations when I go out with my friends. So I'm actually the perfect candidate to receive email notifications from your restaurant about your, maybe your private dining room. Um, I always tend to book for groups of seven or more, for example. So how can you make that marketing more targeted based on what you know about those guests? Well, the proof is actually in the data. Did you know that personalization delivers five to eight times the return on investment on marketing spend? That's lifting sales by 10% or more. So if we're sending communications to diners that take into account their behavior, they're more likely to actually take action. So that action might be make a reservation or take action on a special offer or walk in to celebrate a special occasion because they've found out about uh, an upcoming menu item or something that's really tasty and appealing to them. So why is this? Well, we want to keep your restaurant top of mind through the email communication. We want to follow up with diners to evoke that emotional response and remind them what it feels like to eat at one of your tables. Even if they're sat at home on their sofa watching TV and they see one of these emails come in, there needs to be something there which really like grabs their attention. And you want to make your diners feel special and connected with your restaurant. So um, an email that I might receive could remind me of that, that experience that I had because maybe you're keeping track of what your guests are ordering. Do you know that I'm typically ordering the red wine and oh, I'm ordering a steak or I'm more of a cocktail kind of person? Um, if you're sending me marketing that's relevant to the things that I like and engage with in your dining um, outlet, then... I'm more likely to interact with your marketing. And 
for me to continue fostering brand advocacy and telling other people about how great your brand is, you need to be reminding me about your, your restaurant. And not too regularly. I talked before about the blanket marketing approach. Um, but if you're sending me um, maybe a, a campaign, an email campaign, which uh, reminds me of all the great things that your restaurant does, maybe it's more of a, a message, not around a special offer, but um, maybe it's about sustainability and telling me about how your sustainability program is evolving and changing. Um, maybe it's following a really great personal story about one of your team members and um, what they're doing to change their life for the better using the, the restaurant as a, a, a conduit to get to that place. Um, but ultimately continuing that brand advocacy and overall lowering your unsubscribe rates because if I'm getting marketing from you that really isn't relevant, um, especially after GDPR, uh, I'm going to opt out. And once that guest has opted out from receiving marketing, it's super difficult to get them back on your side. I just noticed we're nearly halfway through uh, the slides, and I just wanted to remind you, like Joviana mentioned, that we are taking questions throughout the webinar. So please feel free to input any questions that you have in the sidebar where the text boxes, and we'll be sure to cover those. So moving on, how do we create this kind of marketing? And the first thing to look at is really segmentation. Remember we talked about using those guest tags um, when we discussed personalization? Well, this is really where all that hard work of gathering the intel pays off. So not only is the intel that you've been gathering great for the front of house team to be able to personalize the experience the next time the diner comes in, or if you're using um, Venga, for example, with the point of sale integration, you're able to see what the um, average check uh, amount is or how many pounds they spend on um, wine or drinks. Um, but that intel can be carried through to marketing. So you can start to develop nurture campaigns that really deliver the right message to the right audience at the right time. So an, as an example, um, wouldn't it be great if uh, after a guest has dined with you, uh, you send them a message to obviously thank them for dining, but also be able to um, encourage them to sign up as a welcome email to say, welcome to our email club, uh, because they've opted in to receive marketing, and give them some information, really insightful information about what they can expect to receive from you and how often. And that can be automated. Um, one of the great things about adding Venga to your guest center plan is being able to set up some of these campaigns that allow you to get on with the day-to-day -day while the campaigns are in the background helping you drive increased um, visit frequency and grow, grow revenue. So as an example, um, the system can be configured to fire off an email that lets the guests know that you miss them. And it might be because you've set up a parameter that says um, anytime we haven't seen a guest for 60 days, um, and they normally dine within the last six months, send a message that says, you know, we miss you. And you can obviously curate that message. Some of our restaurant groups will um, send more marketing-led um, messaging with uh, HTML templates and images. And, and some of them just go for a very simple email that appears to have been handwritten by the general manager to say, we noticed that you haven't dined with us um, in some time and I want to personally invite you back. Um, and those campaigns work really well because that reminds the guests that you're still there. If you did deliver on your promise of uh, amazing food, amazing service, and um, a really great hospitality experience, they're likely to come back and spend more money with you. Another thing you can do is set up a menu item campaign knowing that the guest has ordered particular dishes before uh, let's say you wanted to do a steak and wine dinner event and you wanted to pull a list of all of your guests who's previously ordered um, steak and, and wine uh, and you could send a, a marketing campaign to those guests through um, your email service provider. But either way, you want to connect on the channels that matter most. So thinking about email is... Um, becoming less relevant, but it still is the easiest and quickest way to be able to send out marketing um, that's really cost-effective. 
Another thing you might want to consider is using social media marketing. So with the Venga tool, for example, you can pull a list of guests that fulfill the particular criteria, whether that's party size or big spenders or lapsed customers or buy menu item, uh, pull a list of their email addresses and then upload that into Facebook. So you can start to match those email addresses with people's Instagram and Facebook profiles and you can serve them some uh, content or a, an image or a message that's really specific to what you know about that customer. And I'll jump back to the example of, of me being that party booker who books for normally seven or more guests when I go out with my group of friends. I'm a classic um, target for you to send me a social media ad promoting that you have a special in the private dining room right now. You know, we are in quite tricky times with um, the economy right now and doing what you can to promote relevant messaging to the right audience will be the most rewarding um, because guests are being very um, conscious about where they're deciding to spend their money and for what reason. So you could be really targeted with the marketing messaging. Another thing you might want to consider is uh, using SMS marketing. So being able to pull a list of um, telephone numbers from your uh, system of the guests that have opted in to receive SMS marketing and user service to send that out. Um, one thing that I've seen work to grow sales at a operational level, uh, some restaurants will have dedicated people for events and for private dining to, to grow the sales. And those people will use our tools to be able to pull lists of guests that fulfill certain criteria. Uh, so as an example might be, um, I want to pull a list of all of the guests that dined this time last year and that we tagged attended the car show in London. Um, and you know because you've already tagged that guest, you've got a great program in place to be able to um, capture that intel. And because we can plug into your point of sale, you're able to call up that those guests based on what they've ordered before. And perhaps have a quick conversation with them on the phone or leave them a voicemail that's really personal from the GM, but uh, being able to say, um, Mr. Motion, we know the car show is coming around. Um, we noticed you haven't made a reservation with us. I remember you dined last year. We have actually got um, a really great opening in the private dining room on Thursday. Uh, I remember that you were enjoying the, the scotch flights that we were bringing to your table with you and your um, your guests and we had that great conversation about the um, Maserati that you would, had your eye on that you couldn't quite afford. That type of personalization, if I receive that as a voicemail, um, is going to really make my, my attention and I'm going to pick up the phone and call that restaurant back. And this is something I'm hearing from restaurants that use the service in that way. Uh, and, you know, just putting in the time for a, a two minute phone call, or two minute voicemail to your previous big spenders over a time period or based on something you know about them already can generate thousands of pounds into revenue into the business. And it's just understanding that using the marketing in the right way and connecting on the channels that matter most to that audience can actually deliver revenue into the business. What you can see on your screen now is an example of what I was re referring to before is this idea of blanket marketing or sort of spray and pray marketing that puts out an offer which is the same offer to everyone. And I guarantee that the majority of the people on this webinar right now can um, appreciate or uh, have received these type of emails before in the past from hospitality businesses. But what we're trying to move to is the, the message on the right-hand side, which is a, more personalized. And I feel that you know, there's some time being taken into curating this email. It's for me and it's going to invite me back to have that great experience for the restaurant. And it should be targeted and it should be relevant. And, you know, when we look at the UK in general, where um, we are very conscious of the fact of doing discounting and how's the discount going to affect my brand? And many restaurants have been burned before, um, back in the days of these sort of uh, group discounting um, websites, which would kind of offer to push your uh, discount out to a big audience, but in return for a big commission. Um, 
you know, people are more conscious of that now. And as we are in this experience economy, we want to be doing it in a different way. So being able to do targeted marketing, and whether that's through your existing email service provider, um, by changing the messaging and making sure that it's, it's more personalized, or whether it's setting up some automated campaigns based on triggers using the open table and uh, Venga connection, um, both of which are something that can change the way you do marketing uh, to grow additional revenue. Let's look at a case study of someone who's actually out there doing this. So I want to um, share with you a restaurant group that we work with. It's called the Garthas Group, and they're actually based in the U.S., but they are a, a multi-site operator who have been focusing on reconnecting with their lapsed guests. And very much like I spoke about in the previous slide, they actually use our tool that automatically fires off messages based on when guests um, fulfill that lapsed guest criteria. And they were able to generate over £200,000 as a return on investment through doing this automated campaign. And as I mentioned, this is just you coming up with a template, setting up a rule, and then carrying on with everyday business. Because these, these email messages, they'll just fire off in the background whenever a guest fulfills that criteria. And with Venga, Garces had the ability to track which of those guests came back into the restaurant as a direct result of the campaign that they were sending out and also what items they were ordering and how much those guests were spending in the restaurant. So when you're looking at your typical marketing campaigns and you're able to see things like the open rate and the click-through rate, um, what Venga can do is actually take it to one step further. You know, you can't take your click-through rate to the bank, but what you can do is track how much each guest is spending that comes back as a result of receiving the marketing campaign you sent them. So the ROI, or return on investment, can be configured based on if the guest dines between a certain date, uh, if they dine in a particular restaurant, if you operate more than one restaurant. And it could be even if they come in and they order a particular category from your point of sale uh, or a particular menu item. So an example of this might be um, there's a restaurant group that we work with uh, they partner with um, a gin supplier, I believe, I think it's Hendrix, and they, they sponsor their summer cocktail program. And they go to Hendrix and they say, well, we're able to now track how many guests come in as a direct result of receiving the marketing that we can send out. And in doing so, can negotiate um, great deals with their liquor suppliers to be able to um, get extra product and sponsored marketing material and so on, um, all because they're able to track back whether those guests came in and ordered from the Hendrix gin cocktail menu as a result of seeing the campaigns that went out. And obviously you have to be um, compliant with whether you're able to send campaigns as such like this uh, based on your geographical location and promoting liquor, but uh, you can do exactly the same thing with Valentine's Day, you know, um, being able to understand and pull a list of guests of two tops that dined on the 14th of February last year and sort those by the biggest spenders and perhaps retarget those customers uh, with your Valentine's Day promotion two or three days before you send it to the rest of your database. And that way you're enhancing a traditionally busy shift by growing revenue, targeting the guests that you know are going to spend more. But ultimately what we want here is to make sure that your guests are receiving targeted messaging. And my top tip is frequency is everything. You know, you don't want to get unsubscribes as we talked about before. We want quality over quantity. That's pretty much the key. Um, and making sure that the messaging that you get out there to your audience um, is interesting enough for them to be able to, to react and click on that call to action and make a reservation. Because ultimately that's what we want is them to receive the marketing and then confirm to come back and dine with you. Thank you to those who have submitted questions already. Uh, we will be taking those at the end or Joviana will be field, fielding those questions. Um, so far we've covered two of the three steps that we wanted to talk about today on personalization. 
the first we talked about personalization in the dining room and the second we talked about personalization through marketing. Now the third thing I want to look at is how we can turn feedback into an action and getting our guests to be able to give us feedback and facilitate ways for them to be able to let us know how they feel about the dining experience is really what we want to do here because if you can get those guests to become brand advocates then they are going to go out and tell other people whether that's through the review sites or, or verbally or, or telling people that they work with that they loved that dining experience but how can you take that feedback and actually learn and make small improvements to your business um, using the, the feedback that you've been given so these days it's not really enough to just pay attention you know, just, just seeing that there's some reviews there isn't enough. But you should have a strategy to take action against the feedback that you're getting. That's paramount. I titled this slide, Don't Be Afraid to Hear It. And this, this really does fit with me as an ex-operator because I remember as an assistant manager, it was actually my responsibility to look at the reviews online that had been left and to work out some improvements that we could make within the business and to re report that information to the kitchen and report it out to the general manager and the area manager. So this sits very closely with me. But when guests go out there and they take the time to give you feedback, you have to understand that they're doing it for a reason. And don't get me wrong, I know that there are some review sites out there that don't have verified diners and guests can leave you feedback even if they haven't dined in the restaurant, whether that's uh, competitors around the corner who are doing unethical things or whether that's disgruntled employees. Those things happen, but it's how you deal with them on those websites that allow other customers who are looking for advice and uh, suggestions of where to dine and using social proof to see how you deal with those situations. So four and five guests actually reversed their purchase decisions based on negative reviews. And that came from the Cone survey. I put the, the link there for you to look into, uh, into that a bit more. But that means that negative feedback will most certainly have an impact on your bottom line. So don't be afraid to really hear that feedback because it matters. Feedback trends help you track your restaurant's performance from the perspective of your diners. And if they've gone to the trouble, as I said, to give you the feedback, um, you should think about your strategy to reply. Proactively requesting a guest's opinion of their experience really shows that you care about them. And in this era of experience, experience economy, we want to make sure that we are hearing that feedback so we can um, elevate the dining experience next time. You should be thinking about using feedback as an opportunity to encourage repeat visits and getting ahead of the feedback. So as an example, uh, the ability to um, send post-dining surveys exists within the Venga tool. So you can gather feedback from diners um, using questions that are specific to your brand. Uh, it can be your branding. Um, it's separate to the open table survey, which is fixed and goes out to everyone. This is specifically for your restaurant. And one of the good things about setting up these post-dining surveys are the ability to um, gather that feedback in one place. Part of the Venga dashboard, So whether you use logins to multiple uh, review websites to be able to go in and do your responses, or you don't currently have a mechanism to receive feedback directly, um, some restaurants just set up an email address on their website which uh, filters through to the assistant managers and general managers uh, with any feedback. Um, but there is a, a way of doing this and aggregating it, as I mentioned. Uh, Venga has a dashboard that allows you to collate feedback from um, the top review sites where diners go to uh, for social proof to, to decide where to go next. And obviously having all of that information in one place allows you as an operator to be able to be in control of 
how your reputation is online. And being responsive really makes a difference. But how do you do that? So if you aggregate all of your reviews and you put in some processes to make sure that management stay on top of it, and as I said, whether that's an Excel spreadsheet or using a tool like Venga, aggregation allows for analysis. And analysis allows you to make better business decisions. So you can see from this, uh, screen, for example, how the aggregated totals from multiple review sites uh, are displayed um, from Google and Facebook and your open table account and your post dining surveys I mentioned, um, but also the ability to be able to manage the reviews that are coming in. Um, fortunately, with the point of sale integration that we have, uh, you're able to see from your open table reviews and the post dining surveys that you send out um, exactly who served that customer as well as the ability to um, respond with templated responses and the ability to um, tag people who might be needing to know about that piece of feedback, whether that's the kitchen manager or um, maybe it's an alleged food illness and you want to do a bit of research, having an ability to put some internal notes against that feedback or reply via email. You can do that all within this tool, by the way. There's also the ability to understand sentiment so what do I mean by that? We actually have some functionality built into the tool, which uh, is powered by IBM Watson, which for those of you that aren't familiar is a, an AI tool. And that pulls in all of the feedback, all of the mentions that you have across the various websites and the, the post dining surveys that you send out. And it aggregates that information uh, and puts it under the headings of food, service, um, drink, atmosphere, and overall. And using that sentiment analysis, you're able to see things like lots of guests are saying the restaurant is too cold. Do we need to make a change on our thermostat for, for the heating? Uh, are lots of people saying that the salsa is too salty? Do we need to make some small changes to the recipe for that dish uh, to be able to change it and keep those guests happy? And the sentiment analysis tool within Venga surfaces that information up fires an email out once a week so you can see things that might need to be uh, researched in a little bit more detail, and it's super easy to use. Another thing that um, the tool does is has a server scorecard, and that, because the reviews for the open table and Venga surveys are tied back to the waiter, you're able to see uh, the check level information associated with that piece of feedback. And as promised, I've got an example from uh, an actual customer who's using this tool today. And it's a case study that I wanted to share with you from the marketing director of Ram Restaurant Group. And they actually utilize the idea of case management, what I was saying before about having an audit trail of who's done what, and being able to make sure that any piece of feedback that comes into the inbox is tagged as in action, completed, um, waiting on something from the customer. So there's an ability to manage these inbound pieces of uh, feedback. And this, it's not time consuming. Um, this restaurant group specifically said the power of the, the server scorecard, um, because you tie that piece of feedback to the waiter, allows them to um, have great conversations with their team members. One of the things that we all face um, across the industry is the attrition of our team members. And if you're able to sit down and have really constructive um, team member reviews with these guys and talk to them about where they're, they're doing well and praise them for those five-star reviews, uh, but also talk to them about maybe some improvement areas that they can make. Venga allows you to be able to do that based on the sentiment analysis and the AI that I talked about, um, tying the feedback to sentiment. And, and that's the power of the scorecard, really. And the ability to assign reviews to people and, and manage the case, the case management audits have really helped the RAM group um, to turn around their feedback much faster and have a process in place instead of it being kind of very scattered and lots of emails getting lost and some feedback not being making it back out there onto the website. Which brings me finally to this recap slide. We've talked about the three areas that I believe restaurants can 
enhanced personalization and the experience that they deliver to their guests in the dining room. We looked at providing unique and memorable experiences and how you can log preferences and um, absorb as much information and intel about your guests as possible to really customize their experience from the house using that data. We looked at how to get personal with targeted marketing and using the channel of email marketing, social media marketing, uh, to be able to personalize messages so that it really resonates with the recipient and talking to them in a language that they understand so that they can come back and spend uh, more time and, and more money in your restaurants as they, they feel special and they feel that it's a connection outside of the restaurant four walls. And we also looked at using feedback to improve the experience at the restaurant and not only embracing online reviews, but actually ensuring you use the information that's provided to you to be able to make those small changes in the restaurant and uh, listen to what your guests have to say uh, because it's them offering information that can help you change your business. So technology across restaurants is, is changing and it's evolving. And I think back to last year when I attended one of the um, restaurant trade shows, looking at all of the robotics that restaurants can be using back of house. Uh, who'd have thought that we'd have robots potentially flipping burgers and um, assisting on the, the line in the kitchen? But with current financial instability in some restaurants, it's not always about the, the most expensive innovations that can be implemented. It's a very competitive marketplace and restaurants do need to stay current. So if you want your guests returning to you, you need to recognize your guests individually, even if it's only their first visit or their second visit. So using tools like I've talked about today, whether that's manual, um, you know, printing extra checks and uh, writing on them and logging preferences, or using an add-on like Zenga to support you personalizing your guest experience, um, these type of businesses are the ones that are going to succeed. We are in the era of personalization and researching diners, um, intel, and their preferences has really become standard practice. If restaurant groups, fast casual restaurant um, brands like McDonald's, uh, for example, they're personalizing their menus and their in-app um, messaging specifically to their customers because they know how their, their customers interact with them through that digital interface. And they're also adapting their marketing based on the spend uh, and the, per the items that they're purchasing. So if big brands in the fast casual sector are doing this, then full service restaurants need to be thinking about how they too can be serving their guests in this way from an in dining room experience, from a marketing experience and utilizing the feedback. So that's it from me. I want to say goodbye and hand over to Joviana who's been taking your questions and she's ready to respond back to you. And uh, I want to thank you for your time. If anyone wants to reach out to me, feel free to um, put me up on social channels. Um, but over to you, Joviana. Thanks, Steve. Um, that was great. Now, time for Q&A. And I can see some questions here that have actually come through. Um, one of them would be, how do you determine the best time to send a lapsed guest campaign? Good question. Ideally, you would use data, aggregating your data by dining dates, looking at um, who your guests are, when was the last time they dined with you, and then you want to see the time between their first and last visit. This is the most important thing. Um, you can experiment with this. You can take a segment of your database and run a test to see if they become lapsed guests after three months. Then see if that is the right time frame for your restaurant. Measure it and test again to work out the best time. Okay, I can see another question here. How frequently should you communicate to guests with marketing? This is a really good question. Um, if you don't have anything valuable to say, don't don't say it just because you have a quota of sending out two emails per month. I see this from a lot of groups. Sometimes they don't send out any personalized messaging. Sometimes it's just like, hey, it's summer, come down with us. 
Um, one or two touch points a month is good, as well as special occasion emails or event campaigns. If you are running a special event and it's relevant to the guest, then include those diners in the email segment, not necessarily the messaging. Other examples of the emails include new menu launches, um, additions to the menu or wine menu. Here's another question. What questions are must-haves in post-dining surveys? The reason why restaurants send out these surveys is so they can aggregate the responses. It's important to think about those questions in advance. Um, I think being able to break them down into different areas within the business is very important. For example, um, how was the service? How was the food? How was the environment? Also, though asking questions that are relevant to that restaurant, don't send generic questions across your whole group if your restaurant has a particular feature you want to get feedback on. Um, another one is customize the survey questions um, per location, but have key themes through the whole group that you're able to analyze. The fewer questions you ask, the better the conversion is going to be because guests may lose interest and not complete the survey. No, so it's key to prioritize the essential questions. Okay, one last question. How do you actually access Venga? If you are not a current Venga customer but are using OpenTable, you can sign up for Venga by navigating to Venga in the left-hand navigation in the OpenTable platform. If you are a current Venga customer, you can go to dashboard.getvenga.com. If you are not an existing Venga or OpenTable customer, we can follow up via email after this webinar with some information to learn more and set up a demo with myself. Okay, that is about all the time we have for today. Um, thanks to all of the other questions that have come in. We will do our best to follow up with answers where we can. Um, thank you, Steve, for all this great information. And thank you to everyone else for joining us. Um, yeah, look out for the recording in your inbox.